Every time I shed tears In the last past years When I pass through the hills Oh, what images return stomach bug at the start of September and it wasn't just a uh, small one it sort of kept going and got a lot worse at points I don't exactly know what it is I'm still waiting to get back tests I'm pretty much feeling like my normal self but it could take a while to get on top of but for a while there I couldn't even eat anything <laughs> and I was in a lot of digestion pain HBOT and cookbook proposal and like doing anything it was sort of pushed to the side so it's a little minor miracle I'm, I'm here <laughs> not that it was life-threatening just that um yeah i kind of felt the worst i've ever felt in my life in the last two months in various ways physical but also emotional anyway touch wooden fingers crossed it's like only up from here but once i got my energy back i put it immediately into doing work on the garden because as you saw in the last vlog i have i planted a heck ton of seedlings and then when I lost all my energy, they were like staring me in the face, taunting me, being like, well, we kind of past our prime to be planted out now, but you know, if you ever get round to it, that'd be nice. Um, and I'm like, I'm trying. So the mammoth job of laying down cardboard, um, we got a ton of compost delivered, um, shoveling three and a half cubic metres of that from one point to another, spreading that out, patting it down, marking out paths, erecting uh, structures, landscaping it, planting stuff, is essentially what I've been doing the past week. And so I'm really quite tired today. I thought, oh, I'll be finally able to film a vlog on the weekend. But to be honest, I woke up today and it's like, <sighs> um, yeah, I've really overdone it, classic me, but the seedlings were getting past their prime to be planted out, so I really needed to do that. Um, and, well, I for a moment there really thought I would be just pausing the cookbook like indefinitely. <laughs> I have got the ability back to digest things again, like fibre. So I no longer feel like completely uninspired and disenfranchised by the whole thing I only spent, you know, a third of the year working on. I wanted to feel positive about it when I sent it off to agents and publishers. I wanted to be able to eat every recipe in the cookbook and like stand behind it and believe in it. So that took like a pause, but now I have finally finished the pitch. Um, pitch is essentially like a PDF, including lots of different things like a synopsis, biography, your marketing potential, um, why you're writing it, audience, comparison titles, chapter by chapter outlines, some photography samples, uh, things like that. But it can help to like make it look good. And so that's what I have been working on that was the kind of last thing I needed to finish. Um, it was just a bit grating and tiring to do because, you know, you're putting effort into 
making something design-wise look good, but it really doesn't. It's like a side thing you have to do to achieve the main goal, you know. <laughs> you're doing this extra work which you're going to send to people who might not even appreciate it, so it was just a bit of like a last like slog. But a lot of agents and publishers only accept on the first Monday of the month, which is on Monday, so I've done that got all the stuff ready to send off to those two on Monday and then I will it's like applying for a job you've got to just put together the relevant like word length of biography they ask for and synopsis and stuff just tinker a bit to meet their criteria um I've got like 16 18 other agents and publishers that I'll do next week a question you might have is like how do you find them um, I was also like, how do you find them? Um, but you can just Google, <laughs> um, like Melbourne based or Sydney based or wherever you are, literary agents and there are some like organisations that put them all in a list and then you can go through and see which ones are applicable, like which ones do actually post cookbooks, you can see what other books they've published um, and if they're similar to you then, you know, things like that. If you think you're a good fit then they're worth approaching but it does like get rid of a whole ton because a lot don't accept cookbook. I haven't mentioned this on this channel but I another thing that was just weighing on me when I wasn't 100% for a very long period of time I had bought all these sunflower seeds and little envelopes and had these flies printed um I just thought it would be nice a uh, quick version of Phoebe um a lot of lockdown sort of lovely community things that have been done have been like hanging teddy bears on your balcony or putting a Easter egg when it was Easter in your window, or a rainbow, um, or spoonbills. People decorate a spoon and plant them in nature strips around the place. And spending months walking around amongst these, I thought this would be, it would be so lovely if there was a plant version of this. And I thought sunflowers, you know, symbolise like hope and optimism and community and friendship and loyalty and happiness. That's just a lovely symbol to have in this time. Also sunflowers are so eye-catching, like your eye is drawn to them and if it wasn't too expensive to buy sunflower seeds in bulk it would be lovely to like host a little sunflower festival for my suburb um, and give people some sunflower seeds. Looking up like the ABS, Australian Bureau of Statistics, like the census for like how many households there are, it is a bit overwhelming. I haven't, um, I'm not giving sunflower seeds to everyone. <laughs> but if they're not very if they, if they don't if they clearly don't lift a finger in the garden um or their aspect is just like you don't have any garden um or any sun then might skip that house because i don't actually have enough for everyone anyway i've delivered like three quarters now of the whole suburb just for a bit of transparency uh all my gardening efforts and purchasing of sunflower seeds i have paid for using job seeker money which is something I've been eligible eligible for this year. It's like a COVID government payment that yeah I've been eligible for. So while I don't entirely agree with how it's been divvied up, I am grateful for it and I kind of think, well, I'm not the most deserving person of it, but I can put it towards good use in like a community sunflower situation and uh, gardening. I didn't put any contact details on these flies, but I've been getting a few phone calls. I'm really uh, hitting it off with the 65 to 75 year old single women age demographic um, who must find us in the phone book or something. A couple of ladies dropped in cards because they know someone who knows my mum who... Anyway, it just so happens that everyone who's rung... I'm not the biggest fan of phone calls, um, <laughs> just especially with people you don't know. With friends, I love it, but you know. And it just so happens that my mum has picked up the phone, so she's kind of been like a PA, just like fielding all these phone calls. And she loves it because she's always up for a chat. And then she'll be like, Phoebe, there's another lady in this street who, uh, very appreciative, thinks it's a lovely idea. Anyway, hopefully the end of summer and early autumn, our suburb will be awash with beautiful golden beacons of sun in flower form. Hopefully they germinate and hopefully people plant them but you know if only a few people do that's fine too. Okay I'm gonna go for a walk and deliver some more. Yeah it'll be a very <laughs> chill day and weekend because I've overexerted myself lifting and shoveling um, all week. <laughs>
Hey, I know nothing much has happened today. I just had a lovely long call with a friend, which I haven't spoken to in person since June. And she only lives like 10 k's away. Nature of lockdowns and 5k limits. So that was so nice, but um, yeah, apologies that not much. Oh, such gripping content. Anyway, I do, if I can, want to finish this vlog because I've actually tried to start like three in the last two months at various stages and then I've just happened to film them on days. This always happens where I have my energy back and then I go, go, go and work on things that I want to work on. Just it doesn't happen that vlogs are the number one priority. And I get them done and then it's like the weekend and I'm like, yeah, I can finally film the vlog. But by that point, um, I'm not feeling great again. So that sucks a bit. <laughs> Tonight though, very excited, going to watch the season finale of The Queen's Gambit, the Netflix television series by the creator who made Godless and the main actress was the one who was in Emma. It's so good, it's about a chess prodigy who's an orphan and then while she's at an orphanage and it's set in the 60s she becomes addicted to low level tranquilizers, which is based on a real thing. They were given to kids in orphanages in the US and Canada and in Russia. Um, to keep them calm. It's probably the tip of the iceberg of all the awful things that have happened in orphanages and missions around the world. So that part's true, but it is fiction and it has a very like Wes Anderson aesthetic. The fashions are awesome. <laughs> um, and so the sets and the colours and how it's shot, how the chess games are shot. Today and yesterday I delivered my sunflower seed packets, listened to the soundtrack and the soundtrack is so good. And it dawned on me yesterday, it's got a great like fast paced uh, tempo in keeping with her character who's a bit, oh a lot, quirky and a bit socially bizarre. Anyway, it dawned on me that a lot of good scores are accompanying texts set in the 60s or 70s or 80s. Something about the orchestral suites that accompany those films and TV shows are really good. Like Theory of Everything, Imitation Game, Single Man. Anyway, we're up to the season finale. So many good actors are in it. I'll talk about it tomorrow once I've seen the end. The actor who plays Dudley Durs Dursley, I feel like he's getting the best character he's got since Dudley. That's just really, really good. Tonight, when I came home from work, Tonight, when I came home from work, there he, unforeseen, sat in my kitchen, buttering himself for bread, and the cat was on his knee and smiled at me. Tonight, when I came home. When I came home from work There he, unforeseen Passed the guitar and said I battered my car right now Won't you please give me your tune We had change of the moon We had change of the moon Tonight, when I came home from work Tonight, when I came home from work Tonight, when I came home from work There he, unforeseen Changed in an easy chair and said What's that sorrow you bear? And I could tell him he understood He gently took my arm he listened to my tears till dawn. Morning. Just finished putting the pars down with some pine wood mulch that I went and got this morning. It was a bit of an eyeball situation of how much I need, but it was the perfect amount, thank you. I'd already made a trip prior and majorly underestimated how much I need. As you can see, it's all, well, it is all planted up. Some things are sown from seed, so 
they'll take a while obviously to come through but I've made little bamboo structures for sweet peas and lazy housewife beans and then there's a yellow bean called Cherokee or something which doesn't really need a support structure but I was having so much fun that I made one um, we've got tomatoes companion planted them with basil uh, zucchinis a yellow variety and then like a two-tone green star shaped variety got some mini cucumbers growing I've got, planted some flowers, so like borage, calendula, marigolds, and a wild star wildflower. A little pink flower we just had a free seed packet of. There's some carrots, some purple carrots, some shallot, kale, silver beet, yellow beetroot, and then the strawberry patch is still up. We didn't end up ordering the right amount of compost, so I had to get some more, which I do have, so that needs to be taken down and they'll be replanted at the same level as everything else. And then around them I'm going to plant two watermelons if I can fit them, but they're the only other things that need to be sown. And there's some amaranth in there, and also I had some space for some sunflowers, some teddy bear sunflowers, and some yellow Californian poppies. Um, yeah, I know it's very OTT, it's, um, it's quite a lot. <laughs> it's a little suburban urban market garden. Um, the shape of the bed is a parallelogram and I've got many different designs of which way the paths would grow through it. I was favouring a sort of more organic, free-flowing path structure for the reason that I think that would be just nicer and softer on the eye than something quite parallel and uh, structured, even though my fam voted for that. Uh, and also, I think once everything grows, if something fails, it easier to replace with something else you've got growing uh, if it's just a bit more flowy than if it's structured because then you notice that it's missing and I like the idea that things look like they've grown um, where they are not that they've been planted you know I ordered some dahlia bulbs a couple of months ago now and look at them go these two I ordered as seedlings and I wouldn't do that again. I think they got eaten by slugs or they just didn't survive the shipping. So I don't think they're gonna come through this year, which is a real bum, because it was a really nice variety. Dahlia Briannon, I think. This one's doing really well. Then I guess the other thing to show you is um, we have a rose that some friends of, I don't know, my mom got or tracked down when I was born because it has the same name as me. Um, it's flowering at the moment. It's called Francis Phoebe and my middle name's Francis, so it's just those two backwards. But yeah, just a white rose. Pretty cool. Sung to you tonight. We had change of the moon. We had change of the moon tonight when I came home from work. This chai, by the way, it's stocked in Woolworths, maybe in Coles, I'm not sure. And oh my gosh, it's, it's in a league of its own. Goodbye every other chai. It's really strong too, so you only need like a teaspoon, where I find some chais can be pretty weak. It's so good, it's about $6 a tin. And I don't realistically know how long that would last you because I think all the tea drinkers in this household are just like, oh, move over other teas. <laughs> Let's have that one because it's so good. I'm feeling really good for um, taking off a lot this morning. Finished those paths and this morning I did a bit of a cook up. I haven't really cooked it all this week because I was just spending like, uh, as soon as I had breakfast out in the garden until dinner time and then I was like, oh, I'm so dead, can someone else cook? So that felt nice to have some delish, healthy food on hand. But then, last night everyone, mom and I watched the Queen's Gambit uh, season final and bloomin' heck, it is so good. I haven't enjoyed a Netflix show that much in so long. Didn't actually binge it. Was good at watching one episode a night, which is kind of good because I could think about it and unpack it more. But wow, oh wow. It's by the same guy who did Godless, um, which is that Western that was incredible, limited series. Michelle Dockery was in it. But the characters are so well written, you can't help but be invested, even if there was a bit more violence than is your usual cup of tea um and the whole western theme is a bit bleak and unappealing to you generally yeah the storytelling is so good so the queen's gambit um 
similar in that it's a limited series. I wasn't too sure if chess would be super gripping, but shut up because of course the reason why it hadn't been in the past is because it's, it is a, like a total man's world and the films I had watched on it, I don't know, like ages and ages ago, in the past, yeah, there's not like a woman or girl to be seen. But this is unique in that it's a, well, she's like a teenager and then a young woman um, prodigy of the game navigating not only in a, what is still a man's world I'm sure but in the 60s and the arc she goes on but also every single other character is so well written and they just like it would be such a dream to play any of them because they get more than like what they would in other things like oh we know like we can we can trope that character we can put them in a little category but then they come back and they break that down there are so many themes in it and each theme is like committed to and done so well like individualism and then also like being in a team because you have to be you're oppressed and you have no other choice you can't lose or being in a team because you have every choice and you want to be in a team and therefore you're better as a team than the other type of a team if that makes sense like stardom and celebrityism addiction coming of age obviously that transpires like the era. I feel like it does feel like sexual awakening like really well and the scenes of like confidence and family and friends and never feeling wanted and yeah it just does all of them so well but also the chest element is really engrossing and the animation in it is phenomenal as is like the costumes and the sets like she travels around the world playing in different tournaments and you get like Mexico in the 60s, Russia when it's during the Cold War, different parts of the states. It's terrific. 10 out of 10 would recommend. In addition to the big veggie garden out the front, um, I finally planted out. So around our ginkgo tree, we have like hellebores and lilies and then I've done like a, a rock ring. I think I already showed you that in the last video. And then there's some herbs in front of it. So I fill that out with lots of coriander. And then next up we have like two meters and I've planted that out with salad. So the idea is it's like a little salad bar that's close to the back door. I actually have a photograph um, of the area that I found on my mum's pin board just to give a bit of context of what it looked like. I don't know, four or five years ago. Obviously the box hedge have grown up heaps. Uh, we had a lot of flourishing herbs that then got a bit neglected. Some are being transplanted. But yeah, that's the before. And this is the after. Um, ignore the doormat, we just got a new one. And obviously everything needs to grow up a bit. But got parsley, coriander, uh, lemon verbena, sage, oregano, Vietnamese mint, some lemon hyssop down here and up there there's thyme and then the little little guys you can see between the leaves are the lettuces and rocket and spinach and there's all the hellebores in like the inner ring. If you live in southeast Melbourne anywhere from the city down to I don't know Moines Peninsula and if you ever want some compost the place we got this amount of large compost not the, the stuff I got back in March um, yeah I think I would recommend obviously you can watch and see how it turns out but the compost we got in March well I started off with, with just cheap mushroom compost from Bunnings and then we bought bulk some from uh, Fulton's I think they're organic compost but I think it had too much manure in it also it had a lot of plastic in it like those biodegradable bags um, that you get at the supermarket to put your fruit and veg in it's a lot of plastic and it also like totally caked together like water would penetrate it eventually but I feel like it was just a bit too uh, rock hard so but then in contrast the mushroom one had too much wood in it and I don't think it's had enough like nutrients and bang for its buck to really support like a second crop so wouldn't recommend that but this stuff we got from like a more independent E1 and it was a lot cheaper and yeah if you want to know just message me or something I'll forward you the, the people and it was really good customer service it was yeah a lot more reasonable than the shittier type we got earlier in the year. This area is probably looking a little different to when you saw it last. I've uh, planted out my basil so this is Vietnamese basil these are just some more succulent things my neighbor gave me um, I potted out all our mint to be in this large slightly broken ceramic pot a tip I uh, learned from a Sarah Raven video a gardener 
in the UK um, was to line your terracotta pots with a used like compost bag or potty mix bag so they don't yeah you know, they retain moisture better and so far definitely noticed good water retention in this one we have some chives in this head my brother made in school looking groovy um, there's some fennel I found these daisies in a crack in this um, and that was like a week after I just thought how lovely it would be if we had some daisies obviously if it grew out a bit more such a simple and common plant but gorgeous and nice to have and yeah you can just pinch out stuff and then replant it and things generally do really well that way and then this is a big pot of lettuce leaf basil and a like a dark opal basil yeah hopefully they provide lots of humongous leaves for pesto been getting over here is relentless. It's about five o'clock and I'm gonna go for a little beach walk with a friend who I haven't seen since June, I think. Um, she's a friend I went on that hill walking exquisite day. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited. I'm feeling a bit gross, but I'm very excited. And it's 25, bliss. I'm not dressed for it, but whatever. <laughs> not finished yet it's gonna have um ties and it is slightly too small across the back but that aside so cool also just to show you something a bit fluky my mum is finishing a crochet cardigan she's been working on for a while and I've just watched the Queen's Gambit and what is the background screen on my iPad which I got I don't know like in year seven I don't know if you can see but it's a very young um and near Taylor Joy, who plays Beth in The Queen's Gambit wearing a crochet cardigan. I don't know where I found this pic, like on Pinterest when I was like 14, but I thought it was cool. And here we are. Ah, the lovely, flattering, not artificial light. Um, thanks for watching Honey Bunches. I'm really close to finishing uh, the quick and easy, deliciously elegant new cookbook, a review of that. So hopefully that will be, I can finish that off and that will be the next video. Who knows, might give this channel a bit more oomph and life because the last Deliciously Ella cookbook review I did is one of my most viewed videos, so it might help encourage the algorithm to be a bit more in my favour. Anyway, with my current digestive problems, miraculous, 
what seeing one of your favourite people for the first time in like a third of a year can do. Stress is such a massive factor. It was just so good <laughs> to see my friend. I do have one request. I was looking today for my list of butt vegan suggestions and I couldn't for the life of me find it anywhere which is really crushing because it had a lot of things on it. So if you've ever recommended a recommendation to me ever please write it down in the comments again. Especially film suggestions because I have a lot of television series suggestions or ones that I'd like to do and I probably can't do all of them because they take longer. Refresh myself with a series is a much bigger task than a film. Thinking of all of you in the States especially, sending lots of love and a massive hug. But to anywhere where, whether because of the election or COVID, it's stressy times. I hope you can find some company or some sort of escapism to switch off for a bit. Lots of love. Bye.